So in the last video we have seen the design of a flip-flop with both synchronous as well as asynchronous reset. So just keep in mind if you are designing uh, with the synchronous reset in your sensitivity list you will have only the clock and the reset will be in the if condition. If you want an asynchronous reset you need both clock as well as reset in your sensitivity list. Okay, so let me add one more signal to our flip-flop and uh, through that I will also show you one of the limitations of VLOOK. Okay, uh, why certain modeling in VLOOK has some limitations. So, uh, same flip-flop. So again we have clock, we have D, we have Q, we have R, and the other signal we are going to call it a preset signal okay preset and this is reset so what preset does is just opposite of reset so i'm going to have a flip-flop where both reset as well as preset they are asynchronous so how the output will look like i can draw a truth table for this flip-flop also uh, you can do it so my inputs are okay so let's have inputs here let's have output here our inputs are we have clock input d input p input and r input only output is q okay so these are the condition if reset is one if I press the reset, irrespective of the status of any other signal, my output should go zero. Now, if I press preset, and suppose there was no reset at that time, doesn't matter what these two are, my output should go to one. Okay. Now, if there is no reset, there is no preset. And if there is a rising clock edge, and if D is 1, my output is 1. Similarly, if D is 0, then there is no preset and reset on the positive edge of the clock. The output should be 0. So this is the truth table for this flip-flop. Okay. So let's go ahead and design it. So just again keep in mind, uh, both these signals, they are asynchronous. The output should change immediately after I apply the signal. It should not wait for the clock edge. Okay, so let's go back to our code and we will add one more input. So input via we have preset. Since we are going for asynchronous, this preset should be also in the sensitivity list. Okay. Opposed P. Okay, now the conditions. Uh, as written here, reset has the highest priority. So in your if else condition, that should come first. So if reset is one, Q is zero. Okay, fine. Now we have else if, like you see again, if reset is one, that automatically means reset is zero. Q is one to be one else if there is no reset there is no preset and if there is a rising edge of the clock q will get the value of d okay so basically uh, you can look at the always block like this these conditions will be evaluated if either of these conditions happen if there is a positive edge of the clock a positive edge of reset or a positive edge of preset okay if any of these happens this will be evaluated now if you don't put these two here and if you simply write it like this this will make both preset as well as reset synchronous because uh, the sensitivity list has only clock only when the clock changes the posterior edge of the clock the output will be changing which makes it synchronous okay so let's compile so let's call it dffrp d flip flop with reset and preset but file name is still d flip flop so d flip flop dot v v sim work dot dffr let's apply the clock 
open the nano second uh, at the beginning let's keep all signal flow there is no d there is no r there is no p okay you know for the output okay and let's run like five nanosecond half cycles so that we can clearly see what is happening okay so first uh, anyway output is already zero so let's make d as one for this one i am making it on one negative edge of the clock and you can see on the next positive edge q became high okay as expected now let's apply the reset signal again let's apply it on the falling edge of the clock it doesn't matter where you apply because reset is supposed to be asynchronous so as soon as i make reset equal to one okay here is the rising edge of reset my q became zero okay now as long as this is one q will remain zero once i remove it force zero see where i'm removing it i'm removing it on a falling edge of the clock okay but q will become one only on the next rising edge because because data from d to q uh, it is synchronous it will change only on the rising edge of the clock okay so it became one now let's make d zero on the next rising edge output became low now let's make p equal to one preset Okay, as soon as preset became one, Q became one because it's asynchronous. Now if I remove preset, on the next uh, rising edge, out became low. So it looks like it's exactly following our truth table. Okay, so this is what I need. And it's happening like that. So it seems like everything is working, but uh, that is not the case. Okay. So let's take a case where both reset and preset are high. So let me make reset is 1 and preset also 1. It is possible because there are two buttons to the fix up and you press both of them. You need not know at the same time also. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we need a case where both are high. Okay, so here you can see both uh, reset and preset are high and the output is low because it's supposed to be low if reset is high makes sense now let me do one thing here at this point let me make reset as low okay so see what is happening reset is becoming low but reset is high so what should happen to the output the output is supposed to become one immediately but it didn't happen so i made it low here but the output became high only on the next positive edge of the clock okay this output became high not because of d d is still low this output became high because of p you can see here so that is violating what we have written here Okay. If preset is 1, reset is 0, it doesn't matter what is here, output should immediately become 1. So why it happened? So look at the code. So your sensitivity list, uh, it has only posage clock, posage r, posage p. That means this, this thing will happen only if any of these conditions happen. So at this moment, if you see, did any of them happen? No. Here we have a negative edge of reset, there is a negative edge of clock, and there is no edge of P, P is like flat. So whatever is under always block, it will not happen. So that's why output remain low itself. But at this point, there is a positive edge of the clock. So this expression will be evaluated 
and your output became one okay so this is not exactly modeling the actual circuit i want to model practically this is how a flip-flop looks like okay it doesn't matter how you describe it in very low this is a practical thing uh, how it is built using gates maybe we'll see later but this is how an actual flip-flop looks like or works and i wanted to model it but i am not able to actually model it that's the problem so what is the solution for that so see here because i wrote uh for such for such uh, that is why only if there are positive edges of reset or preset the output is changing so if i simply write r or p this is what we call as like a level trigger it means if there is any change in r or any change in p this expression should be evaluated okay so he is not waiting for any edges of r and p he is only checking the edge for clock so now let's see how things will look like so you have to recompile let's restart and let's give the similar conditions so first part uh, it will look exactly same so i'm not running it like the normal operation okay 10 nanosecond let's make all of them low let's make the same previous case so i'm making reset as one and preset as one okay so it remains low now let me remove reset this is like a falling edge of clock i remove reset output immediately became high because because he's sensitive to any change in reset or preset so at this point reset became high to low so there is some change in reset that means the output will be reevaluated and since he found like preset is high at that point uh, it became high so again it seems like now everything is working fine but that is not the case okay so let me show you why this is also not correct i'm just making preset back to zero okay so preset i'm going to make zero now you know there is no reset there is no preset so what should happen the d should propagate to q but when it should propagate it should propagate only on the post edge of the clock okay but see what just happened so i removed my preset immediately my output became low this is not supposed to happen the output is supposed to become low only on the next post edge because if there is no reset and no preset d should propagate to q on the subsequent positive edge of the clock but that is not happening so what what happened here again in the sensitivity list you are sensitive to any change in preset so this change high to low transition at that time also he evaluates this so there is no reset there is no preset and d just goes to q without waiting for this positive edge of the clock so again it is not modeling exactly this circuit okay uh, so that's the problem so in fact using verilog you cannot really exactly model this circuit this exact truth table you cannot implement in verilog okay so one solution you may propose is here i can write like else if uh clock equal to equal to one so that here it doesn't come down immediately even here it is possible it will come down because uh, uh, at this point as i mentioned before the value of clock is one right anyway even if you consider it is zero here and it will come only on the next clock edge still the problem will persist because your preset and reset can change at any time because they are asynchronous they don't depend upon any other signal they can change at any time so preset can go down like at the middle of a positive clock cycle and at that time also d will get propagated to q so still uh, you cannot really model the circuit this is one limitation of Vidlock. those who have seen vhdl before those who know vhdl uh, actually vhdl can exactly model this okay so that the, that is one area 
uh, VHDL has an upper hand over low. This limitation is coming because uh, the, the edge sensitivity here you are writing in the sensitivity list. But in VHDL, this edge, posit journal edge, you will be writing under this if and else if condition. So you can clearly model here itself. Here I can write like else if posit clock here, D is Q. If I am able to write like that, it's perfectly fine. So I can implement it. Uh, but here I cannot. Now, so what we should do? So it doesn't matter. If you want this asynchronous uh, circuit to be implemented, you follow whatever we wrote before. Both such R or for such P. If you write like this, uh, the simulation will be working like this. But later when we go for implementation, the implementation EDA tools, he will clearly understand this is what you want to implement based on this description. Okay, so he is smart enough to understand this is what you want to implement and he will implement it for you. And in fact, many implementation tools, you cannot mix edge sensitivity and level sensitivity in the same always block. So if you, if you write like this, simulation, this is perfectly fine. But when you go for implementation, Okay, so that's what I mentioned before, synthesizable and non-synthesizable wavelength. If you go for synthesis, the actual implementation, that tool will tell you, okay, I cannot do this. I cannot mix this poor such negative thing with this uh, level sensitivity without any edges. So you should follow either all level sensitive, something like this, or you should follow all edge sensitivity, like this. So he will support only uh, only one of these. Again, depends on the tool. Yeah. Uh, so practically, this is how we write if you want uh, asynchronous reset and preset. If you want synchronous preset and reset, it's very straightforward. You just move them. Now you have synchronous reset and preset. So this weight law can clearly model. But here, he has a limitation. Okay, thank you.